We're back. This is week, officially week six of OSCP. Um, what I'm going to do, well, I didn't want to talk about OSCP every week because then I just wanted to, I remember I wanted to do like every other week. So I have a nice uh, informative video to talk about. So next week uh, I'm going to do OSCP. Good thing about that is uh, I nearly finished the book. I really went hard this week. Um, I have about maybe 70 pages left or so, so we're really excited about that. I'm going to finish the book, finish the videos, and then I'm going to jump right in, and that's where I guess I'll be pulling out my hair. Um, so that'll be fun to talk about, but um, this week I wanted to do something real quick different. Um, if you saw my IT Certs versus Degrees video a couple weeks back, I touched on uh, the importance of uh, doing both, you know, whether you, if you're thinking about doing a college degree versus IT service, why it's a good idea to do both. But also this week, I wanted to just uh, specifically talk about CISSP. So I'm going to talk about how I passed my CISSP, things that you can do to pass your CISSP. Um, if for those that don't know, the CISSP is a certified information security professional. It's kind of like the gold standard of basic theory and knowledge of cybersecurity in general. Um, it's not really technical. I have it. I got it three years ago, uh, almost to the date, 2015. Um, I can't deny how it's helped my career. I mean, it's helped tremendously. Um, I remember that same year I, I was able to leverage some sort of a, a pay raise out of my current company at the time uh, for that. Um, so it's definitely important if you're in cyber infosec is definitely something to aspire to obtain you know what I feel like it's a general service it's almost like security plus and that it's a baseline so if you're trying to get into cyber infosec uh, you can start with security plus but eventually at some point I feel like everyone should go for a CISSP not nearly everyone but mostly everybody and I'll explain why in a little bit um, so as I talked about, I'm trying to get my OSCP. Um, it's, a, it's definitely a more technical cert, and the reason I want to get it is because I want to move towards pen testing and red team uh, work. Um, but for those who are still trying to figure a way into InfoSec and cybersecurity, I'll talk about how I got my CSSP. So um, I don't know about now, but at the time, uh, three years ago, it was six hundred dollars to, to purchase, so you know I I don't at the time even now still I don't I don't have a huge bank account or savings. So what I did was step one I would say step one is schedule the test. So it did for me this was around February March April it was around tax time. So I got my taxes back, um, you know it's a couple of grand or whatever the case was, and you know I just purchased it. I bought it, scheduled it. Um, you know, took six hundred dollars, threw it into, signed up on uh, ISC Squared, made my account, bought the test, scheduled it maybe like three months, three or four months uh, ahead of time, and I just did it. So you know, if you know, that's an idea for you guys. If you you know, if you don't have six hundred dollars laying around, or your company won't buy it for you, whatever the case have you, if you you know, you do your yearly taxes, you get your tax return, just just dump it on there. I would even suggest, um, if it's that important to you, to throw it on a credit card. I mean, whatever you got to do, if CSSP is something that you want to want to uh, earn, obtain, achieve, whatever, step one is just schedule it. And the reason I say that is because, you know, most people try to study first, get a few books, you know, spend some time studying, and then will wait until they feel they are ready to buy it and purchase it and, and go from there. But I can tell you from experience you will I, I mean for me you will never feel ready to take the test even even up until the day I took it I didn't feel ready so I would implore you to sign up for IC square purchase the cert schedule it give yourself three four months whatever you have to do and just do that that's step one you know so at least you have it on the books it's paid for um, you don't have to worry about feeling ready I mean it's kind of like you set you set a goal for yourself. You gave yourself some time, and now you're kind of somewhat obligated to study. So as far as that's step one. So step two, as far as studying, um, like with anything, you carve out time personally. You know, uh, you buy the material, buy the books. 
Um, I'm going to put in the description the books that I used. Um, they're probably outdated, so I'm going to do the same books, but the, the modern version of those. Um, Cybex is a great one. The Shonda Harris book um, is definitely a great one. So basically, dude, these are like 2,000 page books. Um, personally, I'm a reader. Uh, I learn from reading. So, you know, if you're, if you're not a reader, uh, you know, you can find videos. A lot of these books come with DVDs or CDs of audio or video or something like that. I mean, obviously there's material all over the internet. Um, I implore you to to look up the, the domains of the CISSP and, and research that. But for me, I, I did buy, I mean, I think I bought three books. I had those two books and then I had another maybe a 100, 200 page questionnaire book or something like that. If I find it, I'll put it in the link also. Um, so definitely take your time. Um, read those books, read the material, understand the material. What I will say is uh, the books do get technical. Um, they get they talk about operations and managerial and they do get technical. However, from my experience, when I took the test, it uh, it was probably 80 percent non-technical or maybe 85. You know, it was a little more. Well, I was actually surprised when I took it how untechnical it seemed to me at the time. Um, it, it seemed to focus on managerial concepts and operational concepts. And then, you know, every now and then there was an encryption or cryptography question or something like that. But, you know, obviously you, you need to know those as well. So um, it's not to say it, it, it's going to be the same when you take it. I, I, real, I realized there was a new version that came out uh, not too long ago. So the version I took is the previous version to the, the new version, the current version. Um, uh, but definitely read those thousand page books, do the exercises on the back. Um, take your time, carve out maybe four or five hours a day, take your breaks. Um, and then, as I said, schedule it for three or four months and stick to that schedule. You know, carve out time, uh, try to, you know, time manage yourself to where you can get through both the books or whatever your resources are in that time frame and then take the test. Now, I can tell you, um, after the end of that three months, you know, I didn't feel ready at all. Um, I wasn't doing too well on the practice exams. So what I ended up doing was postponing the test for another month. Um, I don't know about now, but back then uh, it was $50 to reschedule. So, excuse me, I rescheduled, paid the 50 bucks. I um, mean, I put it exactly 30 days and I gave myself another 30 days to study some more. That 30 days blew by, you know, I did study, I did, I did uh, you know, read a lot. And then that second time, well, that first time I, I rescheduled, I still didn't feel ready, you know? So um, I postponed it again, paid another 50 bucks, put it out the next the next 30 days, did the same thing. Um, so I rescheduled it uh, two times, just paid an extra 100 bucks for that. So total about $700, you know, invested into myself. And then that's, that second time, you know, I told myself, you know what, regardless how I feel, if I felt ready or not, I'm just gonna take it. And I remember it might have been October, November um, 2015, where you know I already had rescheduled two times, and I said, you know what, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take it regardless how I feel. Like cause because like I said, you won't feel ready. I didn't feel ready. So I, I went, I took it. I took uh, five and a half hours at the time. It was a six hour test or a maximum six hour test, 250 questions. I, I believe now it's changed a lot uh, drastically, but at the time, I took the whole five and a half hours, did the best that I could. You know, it was multiple choice, so, so there's a plus for you there. You know, you subtract ridiculous answers, or at least half, and then you have a 50-50 chance of getting it right. And just always remember, think managerial-wise, or think as a program manager, an IT program manager in cyber. That's what they're really looking for. You know, they're looking for, can you make the best decision given a scenario uh, as a leader, as a program manager, as an IT professional, whatever the case happens. So, um, so that was step one. Step two, yeah. Step three, I guess. Step three would be just, regardless of how you feel. I mean, obviously you want to feel somewhat confident, but like how how I I showed you that I did. I rescheduled. I rescheduled it twice. Took it on a second time, regardless of how I felt, and I passed. And I got it. Uh, I think I was. I got it officially. Uh, they gave it to me December 2015 for 
uh, that's the date that they gave me to for my renewal every three years. So I'm up for renewal in a few months. Um, I already did my CEUs. I'm good to go. So that's how I I passed the CISSP. Um, as I stated, it's, it's definitely a gold standard. It can help with career. It helps with salary. Um, it's one of those things that uh, if it's between you and another person who has CISSP and you don't for a resume or a job interview, it definitely helps. Trust me, I, I can attest to that. I can test all my certs helped me a lot in my career where I am. So um, stay tuned. Next week, I'm going to get back into OSCP. I should be done with this book. I got 70 more pages. Um, so I'm totally done with the book. I can talk about tacking the lab, diving in head first. Um, can't wait for that. I'm actually excited. I, I'm going to hurry up and do this video, drop it so I can get back onto this. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, you know, hit the comments. I'm going to put links to the books that I use personally. Uh, well, the more, more updated version of the books for the CISSP. Um, just remember, I think for me, you know, Getting past step one, just just buying it and scheduling it is a milestone because I know so many people that just, I won't say they refuse, but and I won't say they're scared. I mean, I don't want to offend anybody, but it's just scheduling it, paying the money, scheduling it, signing up for your account, and, you know, getting it on the books. Sort of like, sort of like what I did for OSCP. You know, I, I purchased the labs. I got, I'm, I'm in the class. You know, I can, I can reschedule or whatnot. Um... You know, I haven't actually scheduled the OACP, but I'm in the course, and I already essentially paid for the exam. So it's the same concept. You know, if you're out there and you want to get an infosec, cybersecurity, um, and you're you're not a beginner or you know a novice to the industry, and you're maybe mid, but you want to advance, and you've been thinking about getting your CISSP, just go ahead and buy it, buy it, schedule it, study, force yourself to be in that environment where you know the test deadline is coming and you gotta take it and you gotta pass it and you have to study. So that's my advice. Uh, please visit bunnyflocks.com for any updates, blogs, videos, anything like that. If you like this video, this page, hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you next week. Thanks.